So bless me and bless the group that is here. Help them to learn these things and help me to be able to uh, deliver it so that they can understand exactly what they uh, need in this class because you see I have a whole table full God so you know what they need to learn and I thank you again for Jesus sake amen okay uh, if we get time uh, you know we didn't get to finish with the clay oh I, I want it I, I have to t tell you something funny I I somehow got this stuck in here it's in when I was in St. Croix, there were all these trees there that were hanging these kinds of um, branches. Most of them were, were this size, and I just was so interested in them. Um, and so I asked them one day, and they stopped. You hear, hear that sound? And, and you know what they say that is? That's mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> I got the biggest kick out of that, so I packed it in my, and so I had it in one of these kits from when I was over in St. Croix. <laughs> I got a big mother-in-law's tongue. It just rattles all the time. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, what I want to do, wait one minute, I got to run to the freezer and get it. Um, my helper's not here. Okay. people have used aloe, have aloe at their house or in their yard? I know a lot of the islanders just have it everywhere, and sometimes they don't ever use it because usually that's the way it goes. Um, but aloe, interesting enough, you may know this and you may not know this, the onion and the garlic and the aloe are in the same family of plants along with the type of lily. So that tells you how medicinal onions and garlic are as well because when you understand this poor aloe, I dug him up the other day and his roots this long and that's why he's flopped over. I couldn't get him to stand up. But when you look here, and I'm going to have to clip through some of this rather quickly. Aloe is a pharmacy in a, and I mean it is a pharmacy. It has over 140 different substances in it. And I always say this, if you didn't have anything else, but charcoal, clay, and aloe, you, you have your pharmacy. You don't need anything else because they are one of those are going to do it. And I always say, if you don't even know what's wrong on the inside or on the outside, take it. It's not going to hurt you. It's going to help. You know, don't be worried about it. It can't hurt for the most part. Um, let me see. Where is my... I better wait one minute. I forgot this has been one of those mornings. Okay. Okay, now you can see I just told you it's in the garlic, onion, and lily family. Um, these are some of the things that aloe has, and this is what makes it such an amazing plant. It crosses all the anti-borders. It's antiseptic, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, anti-fungus, and it's a natural antibiotic. So is there anything else that we really need? I mean, if you think about it, now, yes, we use lots of other things, but I'm just saying you're in a situation and this is all you have or this is all you need because it crosses every need that you practically have in the body in one way or the other. Um, and then I put garlic in here just to give you, that you see what garlic has available to it. You know, it's anti-clotting, anti-tumor capable, antiseptic, antifungal, antibacterial, you know, inhibits yeast organisms, lowers cholesterol, type of, I mean, it just goes on and on. And that's just, I'm just hitting the highlights for you. You study up on it, you'll be amazed to find out what's in all vegetables. And these are many of the things that, that aloe has that are so great besides the uh, uh, anti-inflammatory 
uh, um, fatty acids it has in, it has 23, as you can see, polypeptides. Those are immune system stimulators. Did you hear what I'm saying? Aloe helps to stimulate and build your immune system. I mean, that's just amazing. And then it has all these other nutrients in it, minerals in it, enzymes in it. Then it works against a lot of these pathogens. Now, pathogens are like a, a bacteria that um, uh, stays in the body, but then it moves into the place of being a pathogen. So it's E. coli, Klebs Klebsiella, uh, citrobacter and yeast. And th these two right here are very hard ones. And I, most of the people I've ever tested, I've seen them in most, most cancer uh, people. I've seen this particular parasite in it, and which turns to a pathogen. That's what I meant to say. Um, and then here are so many things that you can use it for, you know, burns and sunburns. Now, when you put it on the skin, like I have a friend of mine who is going through radiation, and you know, we always say radiation burns. Well, really, radiation doesn't burn. It's just that the top layer, your epidermis, through getting repetitive radiation treatments, becomes sort of inflamed. And that's really what it is. But I, I can show you some pictures in a minute of how um, of how it will it will help it. So I have someone going through it now, and I have him using the aloe. Now, aloe, some people can put it right on their skin and don't have a problem. Most people, and like myself, it's very astringent. So let's say you have a really oily problem. It's wonderful for that. But it, it'll make me draw up and itch, and I can't stand it. So the way you get around that, and with your children, I used to put it on my children's back because we used to live near the beach. And so I would just, but you use just a little bit of oil. Uh, you know, you can, you, if you're doing scars, let me tell you, you get any kind of scar, any kind of injury, and you don't want it to let, be left with the scar, you mix aloe and vitamin E and you use it all day long. Every time you can think of it, put it on. Most of the time, you're not going to have a scar when it's over with. That's how well it works. So I use, and if you don't have vitamin E, you can just use a little bit of any oil you have. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can mash it with the aloe. And let me tell you, you don't have to have um, uh, an aloe plant to do this. You can buy, you know, the aloe gel, you can buy the aloe juice, and you can still get good results with, with the aloe uh, using it that way because not everybody has a plant. Not everybody lives, you know, on the islands or in Florida or those places where it grows. And so you get just as good a benefit. I have used it all which ways, and you still get just about as good a benefit. Naturally, anything that's fresh and raw is somewhat better, but they preserve it very nicely with the type of seaweed of the ones that you buy in the store, and so it's not chemically preserved, and so and they work very well. I mean, I've used them I don't know how many times. Um, this is, well, right here it's saying, it tells you it's a, it's a scar inhibitor, you know, it's a, it, it's a growth stimulator. The German research found, calls it a wound hormone. It, in simple terms, it accelerates the healing injury, whatever it may be. It really is like a cell proliferator, and that, that's what comfrey is as well. Um, now, this Reverend Thompson, I just want to show you this. He, he had a little coal or some kind of little stove in his house that he put wood or kerosene in, that's what it was, and, um, and it blew up on him one day. And it took the side of his leg out. They did about, I think, three skin grafts over a period of several years trying to get this leg to heal. Well, you know, when you have an infection for a long time, it begins to debilitate you, physically speaking. And so he was kind of really going downhill, and everybody loved him, and everybody wanted to help him. And, you know, we have people that, you know, they're, and I, and I say this with respect, that are all medical and they're not going to listen to anything natural because they just think, you know, you're off the wall and don't know what you're doing. And, and that's not the case. And, but he was kind of a little bit like that. It's like, no, I don't need to do anything natural. Well, some people kept saying, look, Reverend Thompson, what do you have to lose? You know, you're going downhill. This leg won't heal. 
why don't you let us put this aloe plant on it? So what they would do is fillet it and sort of do tit-tat-toe marks all in the gel part and strap that to his leg. Here is the result. After, I think it's right here, after one week, it's starting to close in. Now that white is not pus, that's new skin trying to form here. Here's after three weeks. Can you see how it's starting to close in and it's getting smaller? Here's after five weeks. Here's after eight weeks. You can see how it's almost healed. Needless to say, it healed and the man's health, you know, recovered, his body got well because he was no longer fighting such a terrible infection that he had and that would not heal. Um, here is um, radiation type of treatments that he was getting. And after you use the aloe on, you can just see how it starts to clear up some. And that would go for any kind of burn. Now this, this was a terrible, terrible ulcer. But it took, it took months of trying to heal this because they're the most, when your lower extremities are deficient in oxygen and you don't have good blood supply which carries the oxygen, much, much more difficult to heal and in many cases becomes, um, they have to cut it off, you know, they have to amputate. But so they worked with this with aloe to that thing completely closed up. I mean, I could just go on and tell you stories after stories. So this is my final little thing is that people say, well, can you take too much of this stuff? And so the studies show that the only way you can kill a rat is to drown him in it, in aloe. So you don't have to worry about it. You can't kill yourself by, by taking too much. If you want to, um, as I told you yesterday, if you want to have a good laxative, you know, you can... Um, you can just, you always have to take the thorns off like this, you know, down the sides. You don't want to ever do it otherwise. You can eat this if you can stand it. Did you eat it? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's bitter, but you know when it's bitter? This will get a little bit bitter because the leaves are touching each other. But if you have an aloe that kind of grows out like this, the leaf, it's not, I don't know what, what makes it the difference, but it won't be as bitter. It won't be so bad. So when you're going to do something with it, you just fillet it, if you can see how I'm doing this, like this. I fillet it on the flat side, not the rounded side. So that if you're going to do something, you can just slice it down like this, and then you have the nice gelled side. Now, if I'm going to lay this on a cut or a burn, which is real cooling for burns as well, then I just do this. I do, you know what a tit-tat-toe is? I, you can just do it any way you want. Well, what that does is sort of breaks up the gel and gets the gel oozing, and that way when I put it on, you know, it's going to really affect the area. But for the fact of the astringent, just put a little teeny bit of thin, thin coating of oil of any kind over it. A vitamin E, I always say use that, especially where you're worried about scarring, but it's really wonderful that way. Now the other thing that it's really good for is uh, if you're doing natural births and you have a pretty serious uh, tear in the episiotomy tear, then we just take aloe and we put it on a little pad and we lay the aloe there and then we just put it between her legs and it heals that episiotomy very, very nicely. Now the other thing that I want to show you, let me move this over here right now, is, is it's very, very good for hemorrhoids. And so what you do is you cut out and I'll show you. You cut out, I scarred this a little, but I think I can still manage it. You know, you just cut it just about the size. You know how you have a suppository, you know what I'm talking about. It's sort of like, whoops, because I, I scored it, I can't do it. So anyway, but you'll see the frozen ones. And then you take it like this and you freeze it. Now the reason you freeze it is because it's too wiggly and you can't insert it in the rectum at night because it's too, you know, it's too soft. So you freeze it and then you insert it. Now you, you, you put it in when you go to bed at night and then you need to put either paper towels or put a little pad in your panties because it will eventually leak out. Now you are going to go, <laughs> you know, just for a few minutes, but it, it will be okay because sometimes when you have really bad hemorrhoids, um, um, they can really 
be hot and burn and itch. So sometimes it'll feel a little good to them after a few minutes. So I can pass this around. Now these are small. I ended up using a, a small leaf and I really needed to get a nice thick big one and then you can make some really good suppositories. Okay, now the thing I forgot, but just put your, maybe I have it in the case over here, put your imagination into play, is that um, wait a minute is is uh, well I don't know where they are I got the aloe anyway just imagine a rubber glove and you can just take a rubber glove you know the surgical type of rubber gloves and you can fill the fingers with aloe juice or aloe gel not all the way up you can fill them, you know, about like this, and then you take a clothespin and you hang them on the shelf in your freezer. I forgot to do that to have it for you. And so then you can just pop out one of those suppositories and you'd have five of them if you needed it for five nights, and they work quite well. One day, I have to tell you, this is a funny story. I came in here and I went into the freezer. Yeah, here, she's brought it to me. Like here. You know, you would just fill, you fill these up like this and, and hang it in your freezer and then you'd have it. But I came in one day and they were filled clear up to here, you know, and that's a pretty good size one, that one right there. And I looked at that and I thought, who is getting this suppository? <laughs> I looked at that, not that it would, but I thought, oh, that patient. So I found, I found the student that was, was making these and I said, how is your patient making out with it? He said, well, he, you know, it's kind of, uh, freezes a little bit, but he's making out okay. And I said, oh, I, I laughed. And then I said, well, you know, you don't really have to do it that, that tall anymore. So what I'm saying to you, if you make a mistake, you know, it's not, it's not too bad, you know, but it will, if it's big and long like this finger is about like that, it is going to be awfully cold for a little bit longer than normal, you know. And so I just want to tell you, don't worry if you happen to do that and don't know. So Because a lot of people say, well, how if I don't get it measured just right? It didn't kill that patient. He did just fine. It cleared up his hemorrhoids <laughs> for sure, you know. Um, okay. Where's my arrow? All right, if you're not going to do it this way, I'll get you another way. Yeah. Where's my computer man? There we go. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of these vegetables. Okay. Why don't you do that? Okay, here we go. Oh. Now this is another one that I really love. You know, I was saying to you yesterday, you may not, I, I have to get somebody to get that off of me. I think John put it on and I have to get it off. Okay, here we go. There we go. This is amazing. Potatoes, if you didn't have anything else and all these fancy things that you can buy and so forth in your house, but you had a terrible infection that from a bad cut or an injury, you had a very bad bruise, or, um, um, you know, you injured your ankle and you had a sprained ankle. I mean, there is no end to what you can do with a potato. You can just take a potato. Let me move this out of here so you can see. And all I do is this. I just take a potato and I start to grate it. Now, naturally, I clean it up good first. And, and I just grate it. Just like this. Now the reason for this, when my children were little, I didn't know to do this. So when they would get a sty, you know, in their eye, then I would just, I would just slice it off and bandage it around their head over their eye because it's really good for, for that kind of a thing too. But then I learned later that you can just grate these and for lack of time I won't do any more. But you get it nice and soft like this. 
and you just put it just these chucks I'm telling you they come in handy for everything you just go ahead and and put it into a chuck and then you would just tape it just like you saw me tape the charcoal and then you go ahead and put it on wherever the infection is sometimes if if they have a lot of lymphedema in the leg you would just tear a sheet a piece of cloth about so long and about so wide and you would grate or you can use your um, um, food processor and, and grind it all up and then lay it all in this sheet and turn it over and then just wrap it around the leg. I mean, it'll just bring that leg down. It's wonderful for that. But look, let me just show you the things that are so good about potato. I'm trying to go too fast and I'm losing everything. Where is my, oh, here it is. This will amaze you when you see, uh, Huh? What's the matter with you? Well, let's see, what do I do? How do I get to the next one? No, this way? Okay, here we go. Look, do, would you ever believe this about a potato? One of the most what? Alkaline. Alkaline. It is. Now, not cooked, but raw. You know, reacting foods. It contains many vitamins and minerals, a potato does. It's 20% carbs and 2% protein. Raw have a high concentration of protease inhibitors, which neutralize what? Viruses. Viruses and cancer. That's raw potato I'm telling you about. You know, And they have polyphenols that prevent cell mutation. You know what that means? When the cells mutate, they start what? A tumor. And potatoes prevent that, you know? And then skin uh, have lots of antioxidants. I, I like when it's baked, I like the skin. So potatoes are good for you even. They're healthy for you to eat. They do have a high glycemic index, so if you have diabetes or sensitive in that area, you might be more careful how much you eat of a potato. And it's really what we put on it that mess it up. But I'm talking about, I used to, I liked raw potatoes. You know, I, as a kid, I used to like to chop off a piece and eat it. Well, guess what else you can do with the potato? that works the same way is you just cut it like this and let me get it here and show you now this is a little bit big one but you can get it in anyway and then you take and you make another suppository and you cut it like this to get the juices rolling and you you have another hemorrhoid suppository. You can go ahead and insert this in at night, you know, just so you get, you scrape it good and get good juices flowing from it. And it's very good for hemorrhoids. <laughs> and people don't like to talk about hemorrhoids, but lots of people have them. So that's the reason why I tell it in the class, <laughs> because they don't want to say it. Also, also, um, the, with the aloe, you leave a little piece like this and then, um, you, after you insert it in, then you go ahead and take this piece and you rub it all over the anal area because it's, the outside is irritated and many times the hemorrhoids are from the outside. Well, you do that with a piece of the potato. You would just slice off a piece, score it good, and just kind of rub it all over that area after you have inserted the, the hemorrhoid. So it's amazing. You probably do it with the carrot and it'd work too, you know? Um, <laughs> Which, you know, I've gotten to, I've gotten to the place, whatever I have available, I just use it. If I don't have something else, I figured it, it's, it's got all kinds of good stuff in it, so it's got to work. Somehow it's got to work. In fact, speaking of carrots, I don't know if I have this on a, um, <laughs> I tell you, I'm, it's fun to have a good time. <laughs> I think my, my, I got to have a new battery in this, I Sorry. think. Yeah? You know, if you have precancer cells yeah. on the face, how do you use the potato on the face? Well, you could go ahead and just um, score a potato and just go ahead and just rub your face with it. Off. Yep, get, just rub it to where you feel the juice is going on the face, and I'd do that. I'd do that as many times as I can. 
you know, during the day because you're going to get affected. Now, if you have something that looks like it might turn into something, then you could go ahead and make a little poultice because you do the same thing with the potato. You know, you could tape a piece on. In fact, you could cut a little s slice of the potato and put a Band-Aid and put it underneath the Band-Aid and put it right on whatever, you know, that's on your face. So, and you're going to, you're, you're definitely going to get results. Um, here's, you know, some of the medicinal, here's, here's some of the things you can use it for. You know, if, if you had a fracture, I'm telling you, it's fabulous for fractures. Fabulous, again, for burns and bruises. You know, sprain, you sprain your ankle after you use the ice and everything else, this is what you want to wrap it in. Or clay, you know, I go to clay as well, but I love potato. And, and for all of these things, if I had time, I could tell you a story almost on all of these incredible, my children, of course, I had a lot of inflamed, you know, um, eyes, and they always worked. Now, my next thing is, is uh, cabbage, and then I'll tell about carrots. I got it right here. Anybody know how good cabbage is besides eating it? I mean, I dearly love it, but cabbage is fabulous for ulcers of any kind in the stomach. Are you aware? Anybody aware of that? I've never used it that it didn't work. And now maybe somebody it didn't work on, but when I have helped people with it, it has always worked. It will cure an ulcer in most cases, clear it up in, in a 10 days to a three week period. You're gonna, you, but you're gonna have relief most of the time within the next couple of days after you start drinking the juice. Now, uh, there's some people rather take a pill than drink the juice. Um, I mean, I love cabbage. I can just eat it raw. But right here is some of the studies where cabbage was given to 55 different patients and we get down here, it healed all of them and reduced the healing time, what? 72%. That means 72% you healed faster than if you took medication. Isn't that amazing? And when it heals, guess what? It's healed. It's not a Band-Aid effect. It's healed. But the, 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 maybe you could say the, the pain of doing it is this. You can't make cabbage juice ahead of time and put it in the refrigerator and drink it. You have to make the cabbage juice and drink it right then. And I suggest at least four to six ounces, two to three times a day. Depends how fast you want to heal. You know, you'll do six ounces three times a day. You know, but you have to make it fresh every time you're going to drink it or it will not work at all. I've had people come to me and say, well, I did it and I didn't. I didn't get any results. So I'd ask them, how did they do it? And every single time, they made a quart and put it in the refrigerator and went and got it and drank it. And it's not going to affect, it's not going to affect it at all. Is that before or after a meal or is it fasting? Well, you could do, you know, when you have, when you're concerned about taking something that's going to start digestion, then do it 15 minutes or so before your meal. And then it's going to be going through, at least it'll get to the duodenum before your food gets in, you know, and you'll be okay. I wouldn't mix it with food. You want it to go straight into the stomach on its own, not, not anything else ahead of it. You know, because it has to go in there. And just remember, you're doing these things even if you don't eat. You're doing these things as a, a healing thing, as a, a yeah, a, a medicinal thing. So sometimes you have to do things a little differently than you, you can't mix it. You know, everybody gets worried, oh, I'm going to start digesting in the food and so forth. You want to heal that also. So you want to get that cabbage juice in there on an empty stomach so that it will affect the mucosa in the stomach and be able to heal the, the ulcer. That's the part, that's what you're going after. And so here are some of the things that are in that are in cabbage, chlorophyll, and, you know, vitamin C and E. It's a blood purifier, by the way. You know, it contains antibiotics uh, capable of destroying bacteria and virus, and so a lot of ulcers are bacterial. Fights yeast infection, which you can make, you can make suppositories with coconut oil and cabbage juice and insert in for yeast infection. You can do, douche with cabbage juice for yeast infections, if you have vaginal yeast infections. Um, excellent for pain and inflammation, you know, arthritis, sinus, bruises. I mean, 
uh, lactating breasts that, uh, where you get breast engorgement. Some women it works for, some it doesn't, you know. And let me tell you about natural remedies so that you never, ever, ever get discouraged. What works for you may not work for you. Same thing, same problem, but it won't do it. Don't give up. Work until you find the remedy that works for you. And, uh, the, the cabbage juice is not very tasty. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, red cabbage juice is very tasty, for, from my perspective. Well, Do you have uh, Well, you know, I've never, I've never given anybody red cabbage juice, but it's cabbage, so it probably will work, you know? It'll probably work, but it's wonderful for ulcers. It stops the pain just about immediately. And saying that, I'll tell you one other thing I throw in here just because I'm thinking of the stomach. It's people that have you know, GERD and have um, acid reflux. One of the quickest ways when they're in a lot of pain, and again, this is just for medicinal purposes, I'm not telling you to use apple cider vinegar on a regular basis, but it will stop it almost instantly. You take a tablespoon of it, when you're in that excruciating pain, and it will stop it just like that. It's amazing, with just in minutes, it will stop it. And when they're in pain, I'm telling you, I've seen them in pain, and, and it's, not, they're not, it's not nice. They're really suffering, some of them. And so that's another one of those things you use just as a remedy. What kind of pain? What, what kind of pain? When you have GERD or acid reflux and you have um, between the esophagus, right at the esophagus and stomach area, becomes ulcerated, you could say it's very serious, it can turn to stomach cancer or esophageal cancer, I'm sorry, esophageal cancer. I mean, there's, it's, so you want to take care of it. You don't want to let that thing go on and on and on. You want to do everything you can to heal that because the chances of eventually turning to cancer is high. Because the cabbage, can you mix it with something else, or does it have to be just, just cabbage juice? You don't mix it with you don't do it with water. Or something. Hmm? You can blend it with water. No. Oh. Mm -mm. No, you want to use a juicer. Actually, you want it to go through a juicer. You know, I don't know how else you I, a blender would not. I mean, maybe if you had a really fast speeding one and then wring it out in a in a. Uh, I, I know. It, I know. In Romania, we didn't have. You know, in the olden days, didn't have juicers and stuff. And I, those women, I don't know how they ever did it. They would grate cab carrots. I've seen them, and then they would squeeze it through a cloth to make the juice. And I'm telling you, they work, bless their hearts, so hard. Yeah. You mentioned when you were talking about the cabbage, uh, not taking the apple cider vinegar for prolonged use. That's not the, the apple cider vinegar is for acid reflux or GERD. You know, um, there's another name, and I just can't think of it. Can you think of it right now, Aunt Andre? There's a there's another name. What? There's another name. There's a no. Anyway, it'll come to me. It, it, just give me a minute. No, I can't remember what it is. Yeah. Oh, no, now I'm getting ready to give you the really big thing about cabbage. It, it is. It is fabulous for sprains. It's fabulous for bruises. Now look, it took me, it really took me a camp meeting with Dr. Agatha in North Carolina because I was, she was hard to believe this worked. But finally she, she, we had an experience and we saw how it worked and then she became a believer. Well, I was one of those where it came to cabbage. You're telling me that if I, if I put this cabbage on my arthritic knee that I have a lot of pain or my elbow or my bruised ankle or my sprained ankle, that's going to get rid of the pain for me? I could not buy it. So I said, well, Dr. Agatha, I will do this, but can I just roll it up like this? <laughs> and can I bang it a little and get some juice coming out of it? She said, yeah, go ahead and do that. So that's what I did. I banged it up and I, I got juice like this. And you know, and you could use a rolling pin, you could do whatever, and you could see all the marks there, you can bang it a little bit more. So I saw Juiceful, and I thought, okay, well maybe that'll work. So I'm telling this before 300 plus people about cabbage, and how wonderful it is, and I'm trying to be a believer at that point, you know. And I, I knew that it worked, I heard stories, but it was so hard for me to grasp that in the beginning, you know how certain things are. 
Well, anyway, when we got through that meeting, Dr. Eigen and I would split up on the outside of the building, and then all these hundreds of people were be, be, be coming to us for the next several hours for counseling. And so, but before we split up, everybody, uh, people that had problems all started running to the front and wanted a, a thing of cabbage. <laughs> and uh, so I was tearing, I had this big cabbage, which was a good thing. I was tearing off leaves and giving leaves to everybody. And I got down to just the white part of the cabbage, and I thought, man, you know, I know this has lots of chlorophyll, but what about this white part of the cabbage? So when they asked me for it, I said, well, I don't know about the white part. And they said, give it to me anyway. So I tore down to where I only had just a little, little round piece of cabbage left. I was giving it all out. Well, this is what made me a believer. Later that day and that night and the next day and for the rest of the camp meet, I'd be, I'd be somewhere, Valerie, Valerie, that cabbage worked. You know, <laughs> everywhere I went, Valerie, it, my knee, it feels so good. You know, and I was just amazed because one thing it does, the juices of the, of the cabbage will create circulation and, and warm that area up and start it to heal. So you know how I get my cabbages now? You see, I don't have a, a real cabbage here. It's Walmart, for some reason, everybody goes in there and pulls the leaves off and they just leave them in the bin. Now, I've not seen that in other stores, but I see it in Walmart. So I go in there and I just, when I'm gonna give a class, I scoop up all the leaves I can and then I take that to the, to the meeting rather than the cabbage, then I have it all ready to go. So it is wonderful for knee pain and ankle pain and bruises and you name it, it's, it's wonderful for it. <laughs> Did you lock it? Yeah, I had, I, I had a bunch of ace bandages and I was cutting ace bandages just a piece to wrap it on and hold it. Yeah, you must ace bandage this on. And, and everybody that I know, almost like the cabbage juice, that has used it has had results. Huh? Yeah, for the ulcers, it has to be juiced. Yeah. I don't, you can't eat it because you already, you, when you have an ulcerated stomach, it is very sensitive to any kind of roughage coming in. So you want to start taking the juice. And I'm telling you, I, everybody that I know that I had anything to do with, it healed their ulcers if they did it properly. Hmm? Uncooked. Uncooked. Oh yeah, you don't want to cook it. Yeah. Huh? For the sinus, you said to juice it? For the what? Sinus. Oh yeah, you talking about for sinuses? Yeah, you can you can drink it if you want, but it's mainly to put a poultice across the sinus area. Yeah, yeah, wherever it may be. Yeah. Yes, you can put it across your you can put it across your stomach if you wanted to do that. Clay is real good across the abdominal area. The other thing that's really good, we use it for appendicitis, we used onions. Wow. Where you peel the onions, you slice the onions, you, you get a little water boiling, we drop them in only for a minute just to soften them and then we take them out and we put it in a big piece of chuck and lay that across the abdominal area. We had two very serious appendicitis situations here on campus. In fact, Dr. Agatha was afraid that the one was going to burst if we didn't, and the girl would not go to the hospital. And Dr. Agatha tried her best, and she would not go. And let me tell you, we did the onion, the onion um, poultices across her abdominal area, and one day that infection broke loose and came out all her orifices, and she was healed. Wow. You know, and here's onions, very good for burns, for respiratory. You make a, you make a onion poultice for, for bronchitis across the chest, for any of those kind of situations. It is wonderful, sports injuries. Because remember, what did I tell you? Where's, where, what family is onion in? It's in the oil fam, I mean the aloe family. So always remember, that's why Onions are so medicinal, that's why garlic is so medicinal. They're all in the same family, you know? So that's why they work so well. Now just to tell you, carrots, um, I've done the very same thing. You can make, you can make all kinds, of, this thing is not very sharp. I left mine home, went back in the kitchen, but this isn't the greatest. 
Um, if you have children and, and you want to put something like this on, if you don't think this is soft enough, then you go to this grater and you grate it real, real fine. Because sometimes when it's a real painful injury, you want it as soft as you can make it, and then you can put it on. Um, what, now look, you're not, I know you're not gonna believe me, but you can probably go to the internet and find uh, some of this information. Which, by the way, if you go back in your book a little way, you should have a thing called Kitchen Remedies, and I have a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, but look, carrots draw out toxins. Now we know carrots are good for the eye. Have you ever looked and seen, um, that's like an eye. Have you ever looked at all the vegetables that are like organs in our body? Lima beans, I mean, isn't that amazing? You know, a tomato is the four chambers of the heart, you know? And, and also, the grapes, the way they, you know, drop down, you know how they are, that's, that's like a heart. Lima beans like a kidney. I mean, you can go on, and when you know that that vegetable is shaped like an organ in your body, and you've got a problem with that organ, that's what you want to use. You know, and I've known people that had very poor eyesight, had a lot of things wrong with them. They started juicing carrot juice and take, eating carrots and doing all that. By the way, you get just as much vitamin A by just steaming some carrots and eating them. You'll have to juice a lot more of the carrots to get the same amount of vitamin A. It actually helps the vitamin A to uh, come out when you steam them. You know, so don't, you know, I think we were, somebody was talking one day, I don't know which class, maybe it was in Lee's, about we all think we have to be raw, 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 but there are some foods that need to be cooked, like greens need to be, and carrots need to be, if you want to really get some good vitamin A. But, you know, carrot juice does taste good, so, you know, go ahead and do that. Hmm? It draws out toxins. toxins. So if you have a bad, if you have a bad, abscess anywhere, a bad cut, a bad infection, and you don't have potato in the house, then get the carrot out if you got it, and grate it and put a poultice and put it right on the area, and you're gonna have results. Again, it's good for bruising. It, just about everything I said about the potato, the carrot will do too. Isn't that amazing to know this? Almost every food you can do something with it. Um, one time somebody got stung, I was at the, uh, Again, I, you, a lot of the stuff I talk about, uh, you know, because I worked quite a while in Romania at Hergalia, and this girl got stung, and we didn't have anything else available, no, nothing else around me, but I had a, a lemon, and I just grabbed the lemon, <laughs> stuck it, you know, after you pull the sting out, and stuck it right on that area to try to neutralize the sting. You know, and it's amazing the things that you can do and how God will bless you to do it. If nothing else, and you know... Um, what planting, you know, in the yard looks like? Where is my? Do you know what I'm talking about? Anybody know? But I, I think I stuck a special picture in here because I, I, they mowed the lawn and I couldn't find any. Oh dear, where's my arrow? Um, maybe I should. Is it? Oh yeah, there it is. The radishes, that's another one that's really good, very good for this. But again, people don't want to do this, and I've helped people, and they said, I just can't drink that every day. But you have to do the same thing with radishes you do with cabbage. It will not work unless you um, drink it fresh every time. And it's about the same amount, four ounces, two to three times a day, will straighten this out. And the man, the last man I was helping with that, I mean, it just straightened his thyroid gland out. He said, but I just can't keep doing this. So, you know, you just go with the flow. But, um, um, you know, it's good for bruises, insect bites, you know, good for deodorizing your feet, believe it or not. As much as it stinks, it helps to deodorize your feet, you know? It's amazing, you know? Very good for kidney stones. In fact, they say the black radish from the Orient is wonderful for helping kidney stones come out. Oh, oh, I do have a carrot here. Let me see if I can get to it. Boy, is my computer man, I don't know why my computer is, you know, the devil just knows how to make things. 
Did he go? Is he here? <sighs> I think he did go. Oh, there you are. I'm, wait, here it comes. Maybe I just go. Oh, here it comes. Now, let me just tell you in here, I got it there, that way, if nothing else. Here, here's, here's, here's things that, that carrots can be used for. Did you look for burns? It reduces pain and swelling. You know, great for hematomas, which is like a, a blood type of uh, clot, you could say, on the, Internal usually on the, <coughs> pardon me? Just, yeah. Yeah. Torn tendons and ligaments and bruises and eczema, healing wounds, muscle, carrots. A carrot poultice you can put on any one of these things and you're going to get results. So what I'm saying to you, if you are somewhere and you don't have all this fancy stuff that we have. And many times, look, when I was in Russia, the Ukraine, I didn't always have these, fa I mean, I did treatments that I picked up a towel you could see through. But if you pray, if you pray and you ask God to bless what you're doing, you will see astounding things. If I had time, I would tell you some miraculous stories that I would just look up and say, God, I know what I did. It couldn't have fully worked, but you blessed because you knew this is all I had. And God will bless, you know. You can be sure of that. Do we have this slide on there? No. Huh? No, no, the camera. We just want to write a few. What happened? We don't get that. We don't have the slide. We don't want to copy it. It's not further. Oh, that, that, this might have been a newer one I did. All right, you can do that. In the meantime, let me just tell you about a couple of things I have here before I go into my passion that I want to tell you about. Which, by the way, bananas are another uh, very good thing. Women that have morning sickness, if they eat bananas a lot or take some B6 and some, some B complex, most of the time their morning sickness will disappear because that's what they're lacking. Um, but this is for migraine. Now I want to show you how to get rid of a migraine very quickly. This is here, this is cayenne, but it's 150 to 180,000 heat units. It's the hottest stuff you can buy in the cayenne family. So I want to get the hottest heat units I can in cayenne. And so I have a man that gets it for me in Florida. Um, what you do, and I have, I have a testimony of somebody that came to me the other day had a mig an oncoming migraine. So what you do is you take, um, I use this little jar, and I put, um, which I need to stir this up a little. I, I put this much water in it, and I put a teaspoon, and it probably heaps up a little bit of cayenne in there. I'm, I'm sort of a heaping spooner, you know. And so I really want to make it have a good, good kick to it. And so what you do, and I've had so many incidents with migraine. I had a man that ran up to my, um, when I was doing a seminar, and he said, look, I'm getting such a migraine, I'm getting ready to vomit. Can you help me? So I was grabbing everything I could real fast and had him do what I had her do, which she can tell you. You just take a Q-tip like this, dip it in this, um, hot stuff. <laughs> and where, whatever side the headache is on, that's the side you go up. So let's say the headache is starting here. You go all the way up the nostril as far as you can go and you start doing this. And you coat it all the way down. It doesn't, you better get your testimony. It doesn't burn that bad, does it? It, it might, if your nasal passages happen to be irritated for one reason or another, then it might you feel a little bit of sting, but believe it or not, it doesn't usually. But tell, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yesterday I was having a migraine, and I went about, and she gave me the kayak okay. for swap. Yeah, I made her do it three times. I got a number of thing with threes, too. Yeah. So I made her do it three times. And so the migraine, like in a matter of a minute, Mm hmm It's gone. I had a, yeah, you, you need to, you. I'll show them. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Here. It just stings a little. Okay. 
You just go up as far as you can, and then you just coat the whole nasal passage all the way down. And I'll tell you, I had another, uh, what was actually here, I think it was here at Uchi Pines um, in the fall seminar. She came up to me. I have a trash can here if you want. She came up to me, and she said, I have terrible headaches every day, all day long across my head because I'm taking a certain drug that gives me headaches. Do you think this would help me? And I said, well, I don't know whether it'll do it or not, but let's give it a shot. So we did both, both nostrils, coated them, and I'm telling you, in within a minute, it was gone. However, within an hour, it came back. So we had her do it again, and we just kept that up through the whole seminar. And then I said, now, when you get home, you need to get off this drug. This is nothing that you should be having headaches every day. There's something wrong with this drug, and your body is not compatible, so you need to get off of it. But she was able to make it through the whole seminar by just swabbing her nose every hour, because in an hour, that headache would start coming back. But she used that cayenne, and that would be it. You know, just it. Just wonderful. Does it have to be that... that now look, you may not be able to find the 150 to 180,000 heat units as hot as you can get it. There is another pepper out there. I've never tried it. I mean, you know, the Spanish people eat um, their habanero or something like that. They say, they say they're the hottest of all, right? You know, so I, I no, that that's I don't know that that. that might, I don't know if you can get that in powder form is what I'm saying, but if you could, maybe it would work too. I don't know, but it's got to be hot. But let me say this to you. If you don't have anything else but the cayenne pepper you go and buy in the store, you go get it, and you just pray and ask God to bless what you're getting ready to do, and it'll work. And the other thing you can do, and I'll tell you this really quick, and I've done this a number of times for people that have bronchitis, or if your child does, or... You know, and you're really sick and you just cough, 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 and you just can't stop it. You just take, uh, you just take a chuck like this. Now you don't pull this back. You just leave it like this. And you pour oil over it like this. Which oil? Anything. You can do whatever you want as far as the oil goes. You know, I mean, you, you, I prefer I prefer to use castor oil because I know it'll help it sink in a lot faster. But if you don't have castor oil, you just use what you got available. Now, this is what you do that's so great, is you take that oil. The only reason you have the oil is to make this cayenne pepper stick because it won't stick. You can't make it stick otherwise. So then you just keep shaking it till you get a lot of it on here. And um, uh, where they say that it works, and how I learned it worked another way because the lady did it different, is that you, you do this and put it on the bottoms of their feet and then a bandage it and put socks over top of it. And that will help to stop the cough, the bronchitis cough. And I had people that do this. So this lady, I was getting ready to go to her church to do a seminar. And she says, look, I had some kind of bug that was going around. And I was so sick. She said, I finally got better, but the cough will not go away. I just cough, 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 cough. So I told her to do this to her feet, but she misunderstood me because, you know, if you tell somebody, stick this on your feet for your cough, you know, it doesn't register. You know, it doesn't compute at all. So she took it and she did it and she put it right across the bronchial area. And when, and when I got up there to do the seminar, I think I did it on Sunday, she says to me, that was the end of the cough that night. She said, I put it there for weeks. She had suffered, a couple months actually, she had suffered like this. And she put it, I said, okay, now I know two places we can do this, you know? So, so you know, you learn, I don't know at all, but I learn always from people in the audience. They'll tell me other ways to do things, you know? And when I would do the aloe and show how to, to blend it with bananas, I'd have the islanders tell me all kinds of things to do. Can I get that? Because I've been caught for the You have? Okay, well then I'll make another one. If you want to put it on your feet or you want to put it up here, whatever. Yeah, okay. All right, you're more than welcome to have it. So in how much, how long? Overnight, just stick it. No, it doesn't burn. 
<coughs> nope, it doesn't burn. And it's a now, pepper. huh? It's the, well, this is a cayenne pepper, and maybe you can find it on the internet. I haven't searched for it, but you want 150 to 180,000 heat units. That's a really that's a that's a good one. I mean, it will it will get that circulation moving quick. But like I said, if you don't have it, and you're somewhere where you don't have it, and you only have just regular cayenne, use it and pray, and you'll get results guaranteed on that. Okay. Somebody asked me why I'm doing this. Whoops. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Um, there's so many things. I can tell you this. Next, next seminar, it's going to be longer than this. We're just experimenting with this new way of doing the seminar, and for sure this is not um, long enough. All right, now I'm going to share this with you because this happens to be a passion of mine. And I, I feel like I can't give a seminar. Whoa, where's that arrow? Um, I can't give a seminar, so just bear with me. I'll clip through it as fast as I can. But you have to know this. I'm that adamant about it. And you know what Martin Luther says? Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And I'm not silent about this. I broadcast it even in the stores when I'm in there and I see somebody doing something I don't think they should be doing. It says, what is EMF radiation? Are you? Do you know what it is? You don't know what it is. Okay, well, it happens to be that computer, this kind of phone, these are the worst, and then I found out about this light bulb. I went and changed every light bulb in my house, only find out it emits EMF. So I was, but fortunately, you know, we're not under them all the time, so it's not quite as bad. So I started doing research because I started hearing things about how EMFs. It started with children with brain tumors. They know the escalation of brain tumors is as a result of, of cell phones and children on cell phones, children playing with them, they, because their skulls are very thin, much thinner than ours, and that's why the brain tumor situation is escalating. And so that's what put, started me, because I had a son with a brain tumor. And so that started me... Um, uh, caught my attention, so to speak. Um, I, I know of uh, another missionary that, oh, what is that arrow? Well, let me just do this. I'm not going to fool with it. These are things that emit EMFs. Everything emits EMFs. All the electricity that we have in our homes, they do have a plug that you can get to put in the house, I don't have any here right now, that will take care of all the circulating electricity that you have. But I'm going to tell you what to do about smart meters, which I want you to research this because you can be your own best person. Here, I see these little children with the iPads and I just, oh, I just go nuts because I know the potential and you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. Here is some pictures showing you they, they have special kind of testing where they can see the light, the, how it lights up your head here. You know, here you can see nice good circulation uh, in the head. They use the cell phone and it's, they don't have it anymore. Um, this is the reason why with children it's so dangerous. When a child is five years old and the phone is anywhere near his head, the radiation goes all the way through the brain practically, all the way through. At 10 years old, it's about three-fourths through. An adult, we're about one-third to one-fourth in the brain. And most brain tumors, let me show you, are here. This is where a lot of the brain tumors are. They're either right up on top of the head or they're right in this area, most of the brain tumors. And they know they come from cell phones. Do you know 
Um, in fact, if you read the real, real fine print when you buy a cell phone, it will tell you some a little bit about the danger. I can't remember what it says. But there was a time where, I think it was Sweden, Switzerland, Austria, were not going to allow cell phones into their country until they could find about neutralizers that, that people could put on their computers. And you can come up and look. I have it on my own computer. Here's showing you just another picture of how far it goes into the brain. And then, of course, here's the light bulb. Um, which I thought it was saving, saving me, you know, energy and saving me money, you know, and, and being under any kind of fluorescent light for any period of time or these type of light bulbs has the potential to cause depression, has the potential to cause anxiety, panic disorders, and you have all these problems that you run into the doctor for and it's what you're using and what you're under. In fact, um, these are some of the some of the symptoms of being around all this EMF. You fatigued, you have headaches, you can't sleep good. Don't put that cell phone near or even in the room where you're sleeping, you know. Um, uh, joint pain, ringing in the ear. I had a man come up to me in the seminar. He said, do you think this is why my hips hurt? Because that's right where his, yes. his phone hung on his hip. I said, well, that's probably a good. You probably answered your own question. That's why your hips hurt. It'll demineralize the bones, wherever that phone is hanging on there. Um, here is here is showing you how, these are like special lighting where they can do this so that you can see what it's doing. Now this, I just got new information. This is frightening the snooze smart meter. What they're doing is they're putting new meters on your house. They don't have to come read them anymore. If you don't have that kind of meter, don't let them put this on. Um, because now they do it from satellite. This is causing so, people that are sensitive to this are coming down with some serious conditions. I saw a court case just a couple weeks ago where women were appealing in a court hearing and they could hardly walk because of a smart meter because they were so sensitive to it. And it was causing all kinds of neurological problems. You can, with this smart meter, now I have the neutralizers available. I don't have anything else. I was going to try to make some of these before I came, but you can make them. You can buy um, in like Lowe's or places, there's an insulation that is like, looks like tinfoil. And it's n not very thick. It's tinfoil on both sides. And that is enough, they say, you can make a cap to go over top of this smart meter. And I just had two uh, families that I was just recently talking to, their children could not sleep good. Now, I had this happen in a house here in Uchi Pines uh, in 1989, 1990, that I couldn't sleep good. I couldn't. And so one of our men that came here like six months out of the year, he said, Barry, let me attest your electricity. Now, that was before smart meters. That was the regular meter. And he came in my house, and he had some kind of thing, and he chest, check, checked every plug. And boy, when he got where my bed was, it was going wild. And we went outside, and I had a meter right outside of the head of my bed. He said, switch your bed to the other side of the room, get your phones, get your clocks, get everything out of here, and say, you know what? I did that and started sleeping. Now, that was a regular meter. So I have some sensitivity to EMFs and, uh, and this rascal. Now, I have a... Uh, I have one of these discs underneath of it because the company taught me to stick a disc under there. I have a whole house plug inside, and then I, I'm going to go ahead and get that cap and put on it. They have, and I will tell you this, they have all kinds of things out there, but you want to get something that you know is going to last. And I'm not trying to be a salesman, but I try to find the best for everybody. And these are made out of natural elements, like in the clays and the zeolites. I don't know what all is in it. But they have, I just checked into one that you could put in your whole house, inside your house. It was $2,000. And, and that was in Europe. Over here it was $1,700. I thought, eh, people can't afford that kind of stuff. we got to do these things more simpler. So these are just, you can buy these. There's three of them. And you can put one on your cell phone. And I show how you can put it in your cell phone, but don't glue it down. Then when you buy a new one, you just take, it lasts forever. It never wears out. There are some out there, they last for a short time to protect you, and then they go. And how do you know when they go? I don't know that. Um, uh, smart meters, you know, emit microwave radiation. 
pulses at a level more than a thousand times stronger than any active cell phone. That's what these things, that's how much comes out of them. And that's why people are being so affected, physically speaking. Anyway, these mothers told, oh, I already told you, their children started sleeping better. And that reminded me. Okay. And your cell phones. Yeah, you can put them on your cell phone. Oh, you don't. Don't. Can you leave it on your own? Waste it? Microwave. If you turn it off. Can you go back to the other thing? If you turn it off. Yeah. Wait, wait. What? Okay, that I'm Do what to it, somebody? If you turn it off. Lock can you it take it off? Yeah. You if you turn the cell phone off. Yeah. Oh, it's still emitting. Wow. Still emitting. Yep. Really? Okay. Let me just let me just go here. Here's some of the effects that they know. You know, um, it crosses the brain barrier. Fertility impairment. They know for a fact. Now, this is another study that was done. There was a study done in 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 industry. You know, factories, big big office buildings that have multiple computers and phones and cell phones and every kind of machine you can think of. And what they're discovering is many people are coming down with early Alzheimer's. And they know that that's being affected as a result of the EMFs. There is a lot of information that you can get off of the a computer, I'm sure. Here's DNA damage. Now this Penn State University did the study and their conclusion was that the DNA, the DNA damage to sensitive areas of the brain was from EMF accumulation. So now this is what you gotta know. You're using this cell phone every day, you're using it year after year, your brain is accumulating it. The EMFs are accumulating in your brain and building up and building up until they start mutating cells, and then you come down with the tumor. That's how serious. Now, I'm gonna show you some other things that are gonna make your hair stand up. Um, this one really got, well, this is just another picture. This is of a girl I took, a, I got a picture of, and you know, they had the brain, her brain tumors right about there is where they are, you know, here on the top of the head, there, you know, you can see the brain tumors. And um, so brain tumors, using cell phones, a half an hour per day increases what? Your risk of brain tumor by 40%, and that's not just children. That, that's us, you know? Now, mind you, it's different strokes for different folks. You might use it every day, 10 hours a day, and it doesn't happen to you, but you don't know. You don't know if you have an infinity towards that, if you have a weakness in that area that you would get it. You know, you don't know that. But now this is what really alarmed me when I did this study. Mommies that are pregnant and that are using a cell phone, this, you can't see it here, but you can come up and look on my computer and you can see it because this did something to the color. They're, the baby's head is lit up in utero. So that's how serious it is. You're using a cell phone, you're pregnant, and this baby is getting affected. I wonder, I wonder, and I've been wondering this for a while now, these babies being born with cancer, being born with brain tumors, being born with various things, you know, uh, in that, I wonder how much of these EMFs are playing a role in it. Yes, I know the way we live, the things we eat do affect us, but I know this is major world over. Now look at this. Here she is with the computer in her lap. This poor little baby don't have a chance. She's got the cell phone up here. Mommy's getting it, and the poor little one is getting it. And, and the, the sad side is this baby's getting it while developing. You see what I'm saying? It's getting all this EMF, not, not counting the EMFs that are coming every other way. You know, that's what's good about the uh, neutralizers, which I have on my computer. I have it, I mean, I'm, I'm pasted up everywhere with them. But I, I even have an extra one just laid beside my bed because they give you a three-foot circumference protection from anybody else's EMFs. Um, now, this, whoop, whoop. You know, I see this, and I have to stop the mothers when I see that in the stores. With the baby, they put the music, and then they put the cell phone by the baby's head. I just, I always say, now, God, I'm not going to interfere with these people. And I, I walk by, and then I get so, and then I go, I, you know, I have to go back, you know, <laughs> and, and say something to them, especially when I see this, what I'm going to show you now. 
this right here. I, I see women, do, in fact, I was in, in um, Verizon, and the lady that was helping me took her phone and went, and I went, oh, I'm in Verizon, mind you, cell phone world, and I'm going to tell her, but you know what? I couldn't keep my mouth shut. After she finished, I said, look, I pulled her aside. I have to tell you this. And I told her the danger as quick as I could because she was working. I said, but you go home and you get on your computer and you look this up because she wanted to have a baby. I said, you may have a baby, but you may not be able to nurse properly and you could come down with breast cancer in no time, especially if you try to get pregnant and are doing this. Do you know they make bras with a pocket that you can stick the cell phone in? I got, I got the belt I wear whatever. Oh, you better stop wearing it. Dr. Oz, if anybody knows Dr. Oz on TV, he did a whole program on cell phones and breast cancer, and he shows you, you know, here he is, you know, what should you do with your cell phone. And I see people that are running, got, they play their music on the cell phone, they stick it right down in here. They, they have no idea. Unless we educate, and in this country they're not going to educate you very well because this is big lobby, big business, and, but it takes people like me and other people going around and saying, hey, wake up, do what, you know what you have to do. You can do only the best that you can do with things that you learn about. We can't escape everything in this world, but things that we can escape and find an inexpensive way to do it, like covering that smart meter with what I told you. I have a friend that I'm going to have to, I'm going to hopefully get to see her before I go. She lives in an apartment complex, and she's having all kinds of brain issues. And she has 17 smart meters that go down the wall of the house that she lives in. Her living room is set on the other side of it because she's in one of these complexes. And I suspect that a lot of her problems, and so I'm going to get that, um, which I did look that up on the Internet. You can look up on the Internet how to cover your, your smart meter. If nothing else, you can do that. Um, and then, you know, here, here we go, you know, with men with... Um, in the pocket, you can get hip, it plays a role in, in possibly, uh, st you know, st sterility, it can play a role in. Um, and the, they do, the company has these whole house plugs, I don't have any right now. It's showing you this is the level of radiation, and when you put the little disc on, it lowers it down. It doesn't block it in any way, it just keeps neutralizing, because you know EMFs come everywhere. They're in the air from every place. And so it just keeps neutralizing and neutralizing it. Um, I have two questions. Mm -hmm. Is there, did I make any kind of like headwear or anything like that that a person can wear to like block EMF and from the No, the only thing that I, that, I don't, that I know about is if you put a neutralizer on your phone and on your computer and wherever else, I have it on a number of things, then wherever you are with your phone, with the neutralizer on, you have a three foot circumference of protection. It not only, you are not only protected from your cell phone, but you're protected from other EMFs that are, you know, within a three foot. I mean, it's not a big circumference, but three foot around you. Where do you get the neutralizer? I have some. I, I called the company because I have people that say they want them and they don't want to, you know, spend the, the shipping, so I called the company and I got them. So if you want them, you, you can get it from me, or you can just go on to Altera and you can uh, you can get them yourself. Another way, another way I think you can uh, de uh, determine the radiation is if you have a uh, a radio with, with the headphones and you get close to a computer, you, uh, you get all kinds of static. So that's probably picking up that. Picking up the EMFs, yeah. This was another study that was done. Is the, uh, it, the, the Altera Neutralizer is the only product on the market with in vitro studies that have been done on it. So they have valid studies that have been done that they show that the human DNA is, is broken and is affected. And you, you don't want that to happen because over time, then you're going to have other problems. Here we go. Um, uh, well, anyway, so the EMF detector, um, you can't, you can buy meter things and check your meters and you can see what's coming out of them, but you can't check 
uh, with a phone. Only special uh, cameras and technology can protect that. But I'm not saying you have to ha get what I have. You can go right on the internet and you can buy them yourself. How much is it? They're $30 for three. You know, and so you can, and it's just, it's just yeah, okay. And so, um, like I said, that's my passion, and we can't. I wish I could just share the rest of everything I have, but I can't. Well, I'm glad I came here, and I didn't want to talk.